the flip side market report. Here we go. All right. Wiz Comics 126, a CGC pedigree grade 4.0 promise collection book. Here was your chance, you guys, to win a promise collection book, and none of us did it. I watched it. Um, you watched it? What? Yeah, I, I watched it. I, um, so it's the lowest the lowest costed book on eBay right now. I mean, other ones are like 20, I mean, ridiculous, 20, 30 grand. Uh, non key. It's a non key. It's just Captain Marvel book. I mean, it's a 4 0. It's one of those books, I guess, you, you buy because you say you have part of the promise collection. It'll be interesting uh, about other promise collection books because I talked to uh, Brian. There wasn't because I asked him, was there any books that never got bid on? He's like, nope, everyone got bid on. Now, you know, we don't know if you know everyone paid, but I mean, you assume everyone paid. So, uh, yeah, this is the lowest book for a promise collection so far. So it'll be interesting. Other books come out of the woodworks out of that promise collection that aren't like super mega super keys. Um, see what happens with all that. So. Hey, I see some people saying that uh, they never submit books. They've never submitted any books. If you've never submitted any books, uh, tell me your story of your best, you know, find, you know. Yeah. yeah, tell me those. Those will work, too. If you've never submitted anything, that's fine, too. Uh, give us your story about that special book that you found and, and you've, you've flipped. Um, like, look at Hive Comics is already trying to get in. in, in yeah. this. Yeah, I said, do you? We lost you again. Um, I think we lost Sean again. Yeah, Sean, 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 you got to hit the mute button. Um, so, all right. So, Wiz Comics, number 126, the pedigree from Promise. I bet you that makes you guys all feel stupid, right? Yeah, they, uh, they sold them all on Heritage originally, yes. And then people were, were been reposting up on eBay. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. On to the next book here. Here we go. We talked about Captain Marvel earlier. We talked about the, uh, the second... Me. Yeah, the second print, uh, Marvel Point One. Uh, and now we have uh, the one that Dino gave away. Just gave away. I should have bought it back from him. Captain Marvel 17, the second print from 17. Uh, another second print book that is flying. Uh, first Kamala Khan on mm -hmm. the cover. Great book. Uh, yeah. One of those big old school G plus day books that mm -hmm. um, this community was kind of built around. This Losh. And uh, what else? There's probably those uh, are two the two main books. Edge of Spider Verse Two, Land Variant. It yeah, got the Marvel Second Prince. It was Losh, Twenty Threes. Um, it was Hughes book. So like even Teen Titans Seventy Five for a little bit. Uh, yeah. like, I think Losh was what it was built on though. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't know why we can't hear Sean. Let me uh, let me see here. Check your. Uh, for some reason your mic isn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it's down. Um, now, check check. Hi. There we there go. You go. Yay. 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 Sorry. But yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean, then, uh, I mean, to me, that's our biggest key. It just. Yeah. But I mean, G, on, a, on our G plus days, what was it? Captain Marvel second, uh, seventeen second print, Lowe's twenty threes. Lowe's twenty. I do Lowe's twenty three. That I don't. Hundred percent Lowe's twenty three. Because that was yeah. what it was. What's what? That's what it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? We all missed out on one. Yeah, it was seven thousand. But yeah. like, I don't think it's going to keep going. I don't think it's going to change. Like, you know. So, I don't know. That doesn't mean seven thousand was a was a terrible purchase, unless this thing goes to like, like five and then four. I mean, the I don't know. Like, who's a who's Canadian um, uh, exchange rate? Like what day was this sold? Like yeah, it yeah. might have been sixty two hundred on that day of Canadian exchange rate. I don't know. I don't really. I don't buy that much shit from Canada. Yeah, it's weak. The, the Canadian dollar is weak right now. You can get some good deals if you're in Canada. Or you're buying in Canada and you're American. You yeah, know and who knows? And, and who knows what the book will get you? Yeah. Some right, people probably book. turn off searching for Canada. Yeah, maybe. Well, next book uh, we've got another Adam Hughes book. Uh, we were just talking about Adam Hughes. This is the Gun Honey Foil va Virgin variant, uh, a 9.8 copy, sold 240, 24 bids. Seems kind of low, right? What was this? I don't know any uh, sales numbers on this, but that feels I don't low. Know. Is that I a like store that. variant or is that like a um, um, ratio variant? What's, what's the it, story on this one? 
I missed it. I know that. Oh, yeah, I missed it too. I saw everybody had one and I didn't get one. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, well, um, okay. how you get it? Um, yeah. I don't know. It's probably a store variant, dude, because it's Titan. Um, and it's also just, I don't know where the foil came from, actually. I didn't know this was Forbidden on Forbidden Planet exclusive. So there's actually, do they have the, so uh, this is a virgin variant of the third print. Um, which came out uh, this year. They don't even have a date on this. But you can get um, the non-foil uh, trade dress, which just has Gun Honey on the right in the corner. You're which not is really nice. messing it up. Yeah, it's cool. It doesn't mess up this the view at all for about three bucks. There we so, go. But you know, two forty is not bad, oil, I guess. You know, three D. You know, it's already got plastic over it. You don't know what people are doing with this thing. So hey, yeah. maybe it's a good deal. Um, here we go. Uh, we were talking Frazetta on Saturday night. Um, I've got some Frazetta things to show in my pickups. Uh, we had a cool story from Bill Ponsetti about uh, meeting Frazetta. Go check that out. The MCM show, really good stuff. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But here is the very first Frazetta uh, book, Tally Ho Comics number one. Um, John Z loves this book. I love to hate this book because I miss out on it every freaking time it goes for sale. <laughs> um, sold at 338 uh, for a, uh, I don't know. What would you say that condition is? A bar? Is a, yeah, no. And no, they got a trail, dude. It could be bit, yeah. um, brittle pages. Yeah, it, yeah. it could be falling it's just, apart. It's probably it's probably covered attached. I would assume. I mean, I'm not you know I'm not the expert, but covered attached. Yeah, like you said, the brittle pages. It's like you open the book, you're just gonna either rip it off or you know. Yeah, it still looks. Uh, I don't know, three hundred thirty-eight dollars to own that book. If you're, uh, I think, if you're a Frazetta fan only, and then if you're a collector of firsts, creator firsts, yeah. this is yeah. uh, this is a, a big one to have in your collection. So. All right, uh, next one. Marvel Age 98, a CBCS 9.8 white pages. This is uh, supposedly the first Toxic Avenger, and I don't know if that's true. Yeah, first preview appearance, yeah. wasn't He wasn't in any other comics before that? I, not that I know of. No, I mean, I wouldn't imagine. I mean, it was... Uh, trauma hooked up with them. They threw him, you, they threw you in Marvel Age before you went on to, on to other shit, or at least about the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, fun. There's trauma fans everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it's a spectacular book. It's a good. It's a good deal. Yeah, that's interesting. I found a bunch of um, actually. Let me see here. I found a bunch. Yeah, yeah, right here. I found a bunch of Marvel Age. Um, and then I wonder, like, uh, you know, if I have that one. But these Marvel Age books, man, they were fun to find back in the day for a quarter. Yeah, they keep going up. Stuff in there. Uh, but 355 for this, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I guess you have to be a big uh, uh, Toxic Avenger fan. I know that first book, that Toxic Avenger book, that's kind of like a, a homage cover almost uh sells for a decent amount we talked about that a lot all right next book justice league of america number 50 is this a this is the variant right yeah yeah it's a variant it's a, i think it's 175 jim lee and it's a swipe obviously or a homage to uh brave and the bold so yeah uh, yeah this saw this yeah not surprised that came up um but i haven't seen an idea of that in a while uh, I wish I would have bought one. Maybe it's because it's CHC graded. <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? That means the guy had hit the button next to the other button. Yeah. Okay. You got it. That's <laughs> you were freaking right. I'm a moron. Holy cow. Yours that, is, that would make me mad if if, I, if that book sold. And that's a fair price, though. I don't think I've ever seen it higher than that. It's oh. it's hard to find though. It's a one in seventy five. Yeah, I think this is a. I feel like this is a book that uh, maybe Doc Joe's uh, showed a couple times. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, next book, a foreign variant. It's funny, man. I I swear to God, like I didn't know that uh, uh, Z was gonna put these books out. And here's a, a another Del Auto foreign 
that I found. I think I've talked about this before. But uh, Wolverine 35, this is the German edition, Del Auto variant. One bid, $249. Uh, was this, Rob, was this you, man? Was you? Yeah, Joe said that uh, that last book was one of his first 9.8 variants. So there we go. Yeah, I, feel, I have a feeling that um, you guys are going to be uh, seeing some really cool foreign uh, variant shows coming up on uh, Whatnot in the future here. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're following uh, Rob and Josh, uh, Rob Fordham and Josh Allen. Uh, they've got uh, some great sales. But, um, yeah, here you go. Del Auto, Wolverine, hard-to-find cover, uh, German, $250. Not bad. Maybe a Tim Walker price. Um, <laughs> next book, Spider Woman One. We were talking about this the other day too. This is a crazy book. Uh, you know the Milo Manera cover that um, just got all the hate as soon as it came out because it didn't have the Spider Woman trade dress over her butt. So, her so, butt. so, so, uh, Blue Green sold us a, a picture today. You can't show it on here because there's a penthouse cover that Manera did penthouse comics back in the day. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to show you guys something too. That. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out. Here's the original. Correct. And where is the? You said that there was a. Uh, who put who? Penthouse. Yeah, penthouse. Yeah. I think I have something else. There. Arrows. Yes. Because arrows used to do it too. Okay. Let's see if I can find this. This is a crazy book that everybody went crazy for. And then it got the trade dress that got moved around on it. This one kind of reminded me of it. I saw this. And it's funny because I was talking about this on the show the other day. Kind of reminds me of it. But yeah, crazy book. Uh, her ass is really weird. But um, people went crazy about it. And they uh, made them put the trade dress on there. And um, then it shows, what do you know? It shows up on the uh, the good old market report. Where did it go? There we go. $470 for 9.8. Sure. No, thank you. <laughs> Anyways. Good old Milam there. Three uh, Black Knight books coming up here. Avengers number 48. First Dane Whitman Black Knight from uh, Avengers 1968 book. A uh, thousand dollars, thirty-two bids for an eight point oh, and then there was a Black Knight number one newsstand from nineteen ninety, uh, sold for three ninety uh, for a nine point eight, and a, another Black Knight book, Marvel Superheroes number seventeen, CGC nine point two, sold for a thousand dollars for wow, nine point two, nineteen sixty-eight book. What do you guys think? It's not what I'd buy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I sell, think all sell, of sell. those all of those Black Knight number ones from 1990, like all of them are newsstands. I haven't come across one that has like a filled in barcode. You know mm. what I mean? So yeah. they're probably all newsstands. So no, no big deal. Well, we're going to see what happens. I know um, a lot of people are excited. I know that those uh, MI13 books are shooting up. And um, because of the Blade, uh, you know, deleted scene. And uh, they also kind of had a sneak announcement of Henry Cavill playing Brian Braddock. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was pretty cool. Is that but official? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Henry Cavill let it leak. He said I can't, he can't wait to play Brian Braddock or something like that. So I'm hoping it's official. But again, everything uh, at this point is rumors on unless we see it, you know, from the horse's mouth, which would be Marvel, I guess. But um, yeah, so be on the lookout for some of those uh, Captain Britain books, uh, the the Brian Braddock Captain Britain books. Um, you're gonna have Excalibur and the Ebony Blade. And then Blade is already a sword dude, so I, you know I could totally see them doing you know a Midnight Suns thing then with them those characters. Um, uh, you have the magic part with uh, Braddock and of course um, you know his sister. So yeah, all right. Journey in Mystery eighty three a two point five sold for eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand one hundred dollars. 
I don't mean high, low. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Not exactly sure. We're we're a little off, but it does make me want to regrade that 1.8 I just got. I'll tell you. Yeah, that. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, again, I apologize, that looks guys. Cleaner, but it's something from that picture, you know. I apologize, guys. Uh, these are John. Uh, the first half of these are John's. Um, That's okay. Oh, market port, so I don't have all the data on them, so I apologize for that. Um, all right, next book. <sighs> I f- the I money is like, falling. This was a yeah. thousand dollar book, right? I think it was 800. 800? Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, it was like an 800 dollar raw. Yeah, yeah, but I think people just don't know about this book, man. I think this is mm, such a rare book. I think they caught, I think they caught on to it, and I think people didn't care that much till one of our friends sold it for like 800 dollars raw. Right. Yeah. And then those ones happened to hit the street. But like um, as far as rare stuff and as far as uh, the characters on here and the cover and the, there, it really actually is not a lot of them out there. Um, I, I, yeah, this price isn't, this isn't surprising to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was surprising to me when it was $800 raw. Cause I didn't think, you know, in my head, this isn't a $2,000 98. No. But yeah. Paul uh, yeah, sold his, did book. Paul sell his raw or at the nine eight? Maybe oh, raw. I, I think he sold it raw, and he still has a nine eight. I'm pretty Maybe. sure. Good for him. I bought a I bought a nine eight for two fifty, I think, or two twenty. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh well, that's good. I already yeah. found that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Sniped it on eBay a while back, a couple months ago. Uh, Rick and Morty number one first print, a book that we haven't talked about in forever on this channel. Right. Yeah. Um, thousand, just under a thousand bucks, nine hundred eighty-seven dollars on thirty-one bids. Eh, I'll get crucified for it, but uh, Rick and Morty fan base is eh, it's a little toxic, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> thousand yeah. bucks, whatever. I mean, it's first print. It's not even that. It's not even one. Was it leg like one D where it's like you know crazy amount? That, well, that the uh, white the Vol- cover. Yeah, the, yeah, the Vol- yeah, the white Vol- yeah, all white cover. Yeah, yeah there's only fifty of them. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, the Royland. Yeah. No, no, the other one that got destroyed. But yeah, the Royland yeah. was a lot. I sold the nine point four Royland for like six nine hundred. Yeah. But the thing is, dude, I think I've had the uh, the variant to this in a nine point something, but not not but raw for like one hundred and eighty bucks, and hasn't sold for like four years. So yeah. anyway, I don't know, man. What do I know? Yeah. Well, there's um, what like five prints of uh, number one. So be on yeah. the lookout for those. Yeah. All right. Next book. Beautiful Todd McFarlane King Spawn Virgin variant one and two fifty signed so, CGC nine point eight sold for so a thousand bucks. Yeah, so this sells for a thousand. And let's go back to cards, Ryan. If you got bookends, what do you think the one of whatever sixteen ninety seven sells for? And what do you think the last the bookends sell for? Uh, the number big numbers will always sell for more yeah. right so you get yeah. number one you get number 69 you get 13 yeah those numbers will always sell for more so i'm gonna guess they didn't one, ship out number one yeah i don't think they yeah, shipped I'm out sure they i'm gonna guess they didn't ship that out yeah maybe one through ten they didn't ship out yeah so hey guys speaking of um that spider gwen variant i'm looking mm-hmm. at the uh ebay archive site and there was a raw copy that sold back in 2017 for nineteen hundred. Oh my raw yeah, that, that, yeah, and that's our dude. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking insane. And he's the <laughs> only guy who puts shit that costs that much. Yeah. So yeah. I said eight hundred, if not more, because I thought it was insane. Yeah. And he but he really he bar. really sold it and really yeah. showed screen cut shots. So whatever yeah. everybody wants to say, they didn't think that book existed and, and he had the only one and they figured they'd go with it. Yeah. So and he also sells books for a higher amount of money than anybody we freaking know. So right. He taught me to do that. I was like, holy shit, I'm underpricing things. Yeah. He's the reason that uh, I joined the CBSI G Plus board. To begin there with. you go. Dude. His yeah. name is, there's an effect. It's an yeah. a blank effect. So, We've yeah. already said his name three times during the show. You guys yeah. just don't realize it. Yeah, right. Oh, and um, he ain't watching. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 yeah he, he prefers but, we advertise for him. <laughs> yeah. I just feel bad because I know, dude, he meets me out at Raider games. Yeah. <laughs> You know, shout out to Walker. Um, all right, let's get back. I love this book. I love this book. I wish yeah. I had my copy signed, and it was nice enough to grade this high. Mm-hmm. Great, great little, book. Uh, 
I'll do a little uh, preview of uh, pickups. Um, I got a Jim Lee. I'll show you guys. So this is before, this is the Solson Christmas Special number one. The Jim, the famed, very first Jim Lee art or professional work in comics. Um, it is the Samurai Santa. Uh, there's some really good sa samurai books. There's the Texas Chainsaw Samurai one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Uh, so there's some good books in this one, but this is, of course, is the famed Jim Lee first anything in comics, um, and very hard to find in any grade yet high grade. Uh, that all black cover, and then to have him sign it is really cool. I would love to get him to sign it in like red or green. You know, I think that would look great on that. The, the only covers, the only covers that I want signed anymore are like creator first. Like, yeah. I don't want. I want it to be a cool book that they're signing, but uh, six seventy nine one bid. Uh, I think that's a cool buy. I don't know if that's up or down. I think that's such a rare book to find, but uh, I I would probably think about buying that. How obnoxious is the Solson guy? He names the company after him like it's some big deal, and he puts his stupid fucking face in the corner. <laughs> hey, hey, he, 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 read, he read the John DeLorean uh, book of business, man. Amen. Jeez. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Samurai Santa, very first Jim Lee uh, professional work. Hey, you right, guys next... want to see a cool uh, Christmas? Go for Hot Wheels Six. Hot Wheels Six. Shit. I've got a few copies, man, because I could never leave them behind. But Hot oh, Wheels Six. Oh, Evil is Santa. A... Yeah, Santa's yeah. about to run these kids down. It's yeah. a final issue. It's hard as shit to find. Oh, it I sells see it right for a here. few bucks. Yeah, hold on. I've I'll never seen one in high grade. I mean, I might have picked up not even a fine, probably. But yeah, yeah, this is uh, nice. Here you go, guys. Hot Wheels six, dude. Santa's getting after it, dude. <laughs> Yo, he's putting. Pedal I got dig out a couple to sell for Christmas. <laughs> I love, I love the pre-code horror Santa stuff. Isn't there a Santa tale in the an eerie one? There's a Santa tale or Santa like uh, gives. Uh, anyways, there's a, a, a eerie sure. number one. There's a Santa, a cool. Yeah, Santa this is story. quite pre-code. I think it's uh 1970 or 1971, but yeah. Yeah, it's just so, badass. All right, uh, he uh, Z threw on an Action Comics two fifty two, a uh, low grade raw, sold for just under fifteen hundred dollars, and I don't know if that's uh, what where that is on that's high or low. That um, looks pretty. That looks decent. It looks clean to me. Yeah, back's probably destroyed. I would assume. Yeah, uh, dude. I don't know. I mean, I was going out to the book for a second. I was like, yeah. I remember we bought that two fifty two and just. It didn't pan out, and I just swore off that book. That was early. I mean, you weren't there. I don't think it was early. Uh, Fire Ground in five days. Guy didn't ship it to me or something. Ouch. Yeah, that's rough. This is a weird one. Uh, Meta Zoo Cryptid Nation Comic Chapter One First Edition First Print New Sealed Rare. Yeah. Five hundred sixty dollars for four bids. Didn't he talk about Meta Zoo? Uh, like a month, ago. yeah, like a uh, month ago, a month and a half ago, Z brought it up. It's it's like a it was like a rare thing, and it was like this might I think this might be a little either up or down a little bit. It's like either three eighty or seven hundred or something. Um, more coming out of the woodworks, I guess. You know, so rip off of Pokemon. Yeah, some kind of card game, Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon. Whatever you want. Dude, it's it's a thing. It's a it's a thing now. And another thing that I missed out on as usual. So. Yeah. Uh yeah, so uh, there's there's a lot of made zoo shit coming out. It's yeah, that might be a good that might actually be a good buy. Um, there it's is... crazy that I even say that out loud. Yeah. All right, uh, I've got some weird stuff to show you. Um, on this market report, we've got this Flipside magazine, hmm. an early punk music fanzine. And uh, Flipside Magazine number 17, LA Punk fanzine, rare early issue, $158. So be on the lookout, you guys, for Flipside comics and Flipside fanzines. I want nice. it. Oh, I so can. that's pretty cool. Um, how about this one? Uh, Nintendo Ooh. Power number one, the regular issue, the free poster inside, just a 6.0 sold for 500 bucks. Not bad, but it came with a couple other issues. Guy didn't ship me my marketplace Nintendo Powers. Remember, I bought that lot of Nintendo Powers. Yeah, that was a bummer. Yeah. Well, how about this what, one? What guys? was his excuse? Uh, he just never got back to me. Just, how about that I, one I mean, right there? Yeah. Jeez. Nintendo Sad. Power, the famed sample copy, raw. Yeah. Sold for two thousand dollars on twenty-seven bids. You guys. Now oh. I talked about this on um, 
drunken chat the other night and i want to shout out uh, ultra because he did uh, i was mistaken i forgot i was thinking i was talking about the wizard issue that they gave out at san diego comic-con right. this was uh not given out at the con this was sent in those uh early so nintendo had a uh, a newsletter that they sent out before nintendo power and when they decided to change the nintendo power they sent this issue out to uh, some of the people in that newsletter group to try it out and uh, those who kept it um man this is a super super rare book uh i'm stoked on this because i think i have a copy that is nicer than this nice yeah so i'm really looking forward to sending that in but two thousand dollars shout out to matt devoe uh cover price yeah raw crazy 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 book right here um like nostalgia you know pop culture craziness so be on the lookout for those nintendo powers started. joking yeah look out for those uh nintendo powers seriously man all right next book how about these uh we've talked about 19 or uh, sports illustrated books in the past oh, wow. like the first gretzky sports illustrated the first um jordan on uh, and uh, north carolina sports illustrated here is the first kobe sports illustrated cgc 9.8 sold for four grand get wow. the fuck get out of here holy cow yes sir right crazy <laughs> stuff <laughs> um how about this one uh mac world from 1984 first premiere issue featuring steve jobs you got anything one you bid guys. man wow one bid one bid yep all right uh wait, wait we're not going to talk about that yet we're going to talk about <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to talk about that yet we're going to talk about some other things all right so this is uh this is kind of crazy i don't know what the hell these are um these are they're called refreshment toys cuppies oh, I remember from cuppies yeah 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 yeah. You remember these? What yeah, is this I, from? I, I think know. you can get these out of um if don't Japan. Say, they're from uh, Japan. Uh some, they're made in Japan. Oh, I thought they were the ones you get out of the quarter machines, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The old yeah. it says here just for the two for the eyeballs. Yeah. Eleven hundred dollars, twenty two bids. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I thought that was uh very interesting um all right let me uh go back here let me find the next one this is um this is pretty cool uh this is a venom impel card that charles hall did a sketch over and look how great that looks hmm. right pretty dope that's a cool thing to do with a with the impel cards now i think he signed it it sold for 232 dollars thought that was pretty cool um this is uh we've talked about uh po pokemon and battle beasts and how pokemon i thought could have been like the battle beasts you know for the, for that generation and they did do little pokemon characters and this is uh the all 152 figures you could buy at once back then and it's unopened Ooh. here they are and this sold for 720 dollars i wonder where that retailed back in the day i don't know shit question. i don't know shit about pokemon but I, I, I dig that. Yeah, if I saw this, I'd buy it for in a, in a, in a second, right? Um, this is a cool one. This is uh, I've never seen this before. So if you guys know, GI Joe did uh, India figures. They were make they were called Fun School, and uh, this is Wild Weasel with a different paint job. You could tell it's kind of off on the paint, but it came uh, with a parachute, and this sold for one hundred seventeen dollars. I don't know if what this came with what. Uh, toy it came with um but it is cool and uh i would love to find it, it even had the, the the gun an orange uh i forget whose gun that was but an orange i think it might have been shockwaves or not shockwave um yeah shockwave and not shockwave uh who's the blue dude that has the the night the night oh uh, crap low not low light not no. low light that's the, the cobra guy yeah no, he has the, the 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 night force version. That's really hard to find. Chat will let us know. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, all right, another one is how about this? Uh, we talk about Voltron all the time. This is uh, a vintage Voltron Go Lion sold for. Looks pretty. Dan I mean, not not great, but this thing sold for a lot of money, man. How much? So four hundred and ten dollars thirty. We had that too back in the day. Four ten. Jeez. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I love uh, Voltron. I love that type of stuff. Um, all right. This is a cool one for all you magazine people. Uh, more magazine craziness. All you Bitcoin people. I think this is the first time where they talk about Bitcoin. Uh, as you guys can see, this is the New Yorker what? from 2011. Sold for three, oh. $345. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. There you go. October 10th, 2011. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's cool stuff. Um, um, Time Magazine. How about this one? Time Magazine from 1930. Al Capone. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. $1,500. I thought that was very cool. Um, I love the the magazine stuff, and this one was a cool, very cool find that I'm going to have to look for my own. This is Rolling Stone from November 25th, 1971. First Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas from Hunter S. Thompson. It's even got a Ralph Steadman cover. How about that? Sold for, a, I think that's pretty low. I mean, the condition's pretty bad, but for $114, I would have bought that. That is, that is really cool to me um all right uh how about this one for all you pulp fans i think this is kind of pulpish be on the lookout for these old movie magazines this is movie humor from 1935 a really great cover um there's also uh another book that i love called that's a magazine from uh, around that time same time period called film fun that has great covers mm. Yeah, there's a they're just so so many pulps with amazing yeah. covers yes just yeah. waiting to be discovered yeah um i love these here's the source from 1995 horace big cover with the twin towers it sold for 355 dollars damn yeah you think that's great how about this one where is it vibe magazine from 1996 tupac cover yeah tupac cover Fuck in me terrible I, I, condition i know i had that yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah that i had too. the poster yeah. i think there was a poster i had it was yeah. a saint ides poster i think but i don't think it had gray and suge i don't know um all right that is uh is all fun and fine um but there are a lot of other cool things that I've got in this. Let me get rid of these. Let me get rid of these. Real quick, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get back into these. Um, where were we? Oh, yeah. These. Here's your Marvel's Legends, the Spider-Man 2099 from the Spider-Man Classic line. These were before Legends came out, so I don't know why they call them Legends, but uh, they were like the prototype for the Legends. So this, of course, is your famed Spider-Man 2099. This sold. I think this is a great deal. Sold for $218 for 35 bids, sold uh, the other day. But not only did that sell, how about the Ben Riley? sold for 151 dollars no yeah okay. yeah so you guys can get your uh uh it, uh, i don't know how, how different the uh web of spider-man is on this i think it has like a little bit of a different tint on the back but still a big book a big care uh, figure and a book behind it but this is crazy so the very first time that they put out build the figures uh was um the galactus run and they did a second ah. run or a third run that was the um, Sentinel. Well, the one only one that I never bought because I thought there were so many of them was the Spider-Man one. And look how much the Spider-Man Sentinel Legend sells for nowadays. That's hundred and fifty dollars. Quote unquote first appearance Spider-Man. First appearance Spider-Man. Uh, yep. I, and I had that one too. Huh. That's the only one I don't have in the Sentinel set, and I'm kicking hey. myself for it. Yeah. Uh, next one. All right. So a lot of no. these precious metal gems sold. Probstein yeah, had probably a hundred yeah. precious metal gems. Uh, they call them PMGs. Um, sold. Uh, these are a few of them. Go. There's. He, he sold a shit ton of them, and they sold for high money. But this is the five of five miles the PSA seven. Sold for eight thousand four hundred and thirty three dollars. Wow, it does a seven too, Brian. It's not yeah. even like it's a PSA ten. These PMGs are get so hard. Here. Yeah, the grade on these is so hard to get the chipping and that type of stuff. A Logan, uh, or sorry, a Black Panther sold for thirteen thirteen in a uh, PSA eight. In a not PSA a ten. Eight. Yeah, not yeah. a ten. That's because it's so 50, rare. Not out of five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? 
Uh, here we go. High grade, you guys. Not even a 10. This is a PSA 9 1977 Luke sold for $5,300 on 48 bids. It's crazy. It's also Probstein, so you got to throw an extra 20% probably on it because <laughs> yeah. of the Probstein stuff. Um, his stuff sells for a lot. How about this? The famed no uh, card number semicolon card. This is one of the only uh, air garbage bell kid cards. I think there's maybe one other. The the uh, the snow the snowman one. I forget the Gale something. Anyways, this is a semicolon. This card is in horrible condition and it's still sold for two hundred and fifty dollars. And as you guys can see, it doesn't have the number in the upper right hand corner. That's how you know the air. Hmm. What series? Uh, what series is that? Do you remember? This series five or four? Okay. Yeah. Um, how about this? This is amazing. Look how beautiful condition this mm. garbage bill kids Ooh. series one box Ooh. is. That poster is dope too. Shit. No, I've been really? trying to find just that poster for so long, man. Just the the uh, series one poster, and you guys should know that the uh, it also comes with a trade card for the uh wwf cards that's the um, holster we can yeah, see it. the holster <laughs> eighteen thousand dollars that's insane for 48 it's not, packs it's not even uh authenticated by the uh no uh, baseball card exchange nope that's crazy dude ah. 51 bids that's nuts that gives me hope for my uh, mini series box yes it does yes it does <laughs> um all right so i talked about this on uh, drunken chat a little bit Unfortunately, this is not the same one we're looking at. This is the uh, Power of the Force set that they redid. Um, and uh, this is the, the set that came with it when if you sent that in. So basically, you got the early bird card and you sent it in. And this is uh, from 77 and you got the original four figures, right? Well, uh, that one, just the uh, certificate package, not the figures, just the certificate, which is this from 77. This one I'm holding is from 96, I believe, when they redid it. But just the card sold for $900. Hmm. If you got the, um, the early bird certificate from 96, this is what you got. So they just redid them in... Uh, newer castings they look uh newer they're they're like vintage line so okay. you see this is what they came in so be on the lookout for boxes like that uh from any year basically um all right let me get back into this where was i semicolon all right, Star Wars. So that went for $910, just a certificate from 77. All right, Oof. this is crazy. So Star Wars figures from Brazil, I believe. Yep, Brazil. They were they're called glass. Every time you anytime you see that word glass light, that is the manufacturer, I it's think, of those. Here. Yeah. So just Leia's pistol from the Brazil glass light uh, line <laughs> sold for $950. Just through pistols. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, shout out to Trial by God's Nate. He's got an amazing story uh, that is probably one of the best stories I've ever heard about a G.I. Joe and, and getting a Snake Eyes figure and still owning it. We'll have him talk, tell that story again on the channel at some point. But this isn't uh, the one he has. He has version one. This is version two, but this is the Brazilian one. This is Australia uh, from 1999. Uh, mm -hmm. Brazil, Australia from 19, nine, 1989. Sorry. Um, an AFA 75 sold for almost eight, 75, 7,600 dollars. Okay, now I remember back in the day, um, it was Brazil, India, like because they had the cheap plastic, those weren't collectible at nope. all. Yeah, people hated them. Yeah, yep. And I remember mm -hmm. just shunning, shunning, uh, the, 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 the figures from those, from those yeah, countries. Yep. Yeah. You didn't mind the action force ones because they were made a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. You're 100 percent like the fun is, school ones. Fun is it school, cardboard? Yep. No, is a cardboard like you know how foreign comics are different? Yeah, on is fun school, the, the cardboard is flimsy on the fun school. No, no, no. I meant as the actual depiction, the picture different from the US. On some to, of them. Okay. On some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Thanks. 
uh, G.I. Joe. Uh, I love the interrogator figure. This came with uh, this isn't the original interrogator. The original interrogator came with um, the helicopter where you pull the little thing and it'd go flying. And uh, it was there was a Cobra version. It had like this little thing and you would put it on like a little wand and you go rip it out. And this thing would go, you know, like it's like a helicopter thing. The interrogator figure tough to find. This is the mail away interrogator figure where they made all the neon colors on it. Look how much that fucker sells for two hundred and thirteen dollars on 40 bids for the mail away figure for interrogator. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, next figure. All right, you guys. So GI Joe had a, had a club, um, towards the end of the run, um, when they started re putting out the figures a couple of years ago, and you can only get certain figures by being part of that club online and, uh, be on the lookout for these figures. Cause they sell for a crap ton. Uh, there's a lot of them. This is dial tone. They came in these, uh, you know, bags like this. Just the dial tone figure, as you can see, sold for $186. So be on the lookout for those club figures. Go go search them and uh, look more into them. There's a lot of them. Uh, I have the first five figures, I think. Um, this is a crazy figure that I talk about a lot. This is the Dragon Man figure from the Fantastic Four Classics line, which are just like the Spider-Man Classics line that we started with. Uh, this Dragon Man figure is such a great sculpt, and it always sells for a lot. It's just like the Spider Hulk figure, great sculpt. Loose, it sells for, as you can see, 300 plus. Um, so <laughs> crazy, crazy cool figure. This is the Pit Build a figure. It, these came out, uh, they did like, I think they were called like a Legends line or something for oh. Comics Legends or something like that. And Pit was the Build a figure. Uh, I remember they were on the pegs back in the day, all over the place. <laughs> yeah nobody bought them <laughs> and <laughs> and look how much well that this is why and that's why this thing goes for so much the build a figure 380 dollars 28 27 bids great looking uh sculpt uh pit you gotta love pit um your transformers fans i didn't know about these have you ever seen these Ooh, never, never never micro transformers airstrike patrol from 1988 Ooh. i don't know if they transform but they look like micro machine style yeah. Uh, toys but if they transform that's even cooler uh sealed not in very good condition uh this set sold for 305 uh, if they transform you have to fucking open them okay yeah. screw collectability <laughs> 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 just saying yeah so those are interesting uh this is crazy all right so i got a cool story to tell tell um my uncle one of my favorite memories as a kid that is the most clear memory i have is when i first moved to phoenix arizona i think i was probably five yeah i was five uh my uncle came and got me at my my parents new house and we got on the great the bus the local bus and made it and and drove all the way up to metro center and we went to metro center and metro center back in the day in phoenix had uh it's where they shot um bill and ted so it had you know the the skate rink and it had this cool little hideaway place where you go, you find the hideaway and you have to go back in there. And they had like the old Western place where you dress up as Western people and shit. Well, they had a, a KB toy store. Or, yeah, KB. Mm -hmm. And it was the first store that you would see when you walked in the mall if you went through Sears, I think, which is where we always went through. And it was that first store on your left. And they, I remember going there with my uncle that day and my uncle taking me in that store. It's the first time I'd ever been in there, first time I'd ever seen it. And it had all the Star Wars Power of the Force figures, the original Power of the Force from 85 with the coins. They had just came out and it had all the Kenner Superpowers figures. And the, my uncle goes, you can buy one of each. I'll buy one of each for you. Pick your figure. I picked Cyborg. And I picked Han Solo and Carbonite. Both those figures were two of the rarest figures in the runs. As you can see, the Cyborg in horrible condition. All the paint is off this thing. Loose. Sold for $316. Very tough figure to find in any condition, as you guys can see. I legit didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Yeah. It's all chrome when you first get it. And that's why I think I, I grabbed it, because it was just so shiny. Um, and then, of course, you know, who doesn't love the Han Solo and Crypt or, uh, and um, Carbonite. whatever scene? Yeah, right, yeah. Carbonite. Um, all right. The Indiana Jones series. Uh, the Indiana sells for a lot, but so does the uh, Marion Ravenwood figure. So be on the lookout for that one. You wouldn't think it sold for $635. Here you go, Sean. 
I have never seen this. This is Masters of the Universe Origins. Leo Faker and Duplicat from PowerCon 2021. It's yeah. Faker with a Faker cat. Yeah. So here's the deal with, with, with PowerCon is they... So one thing about PowerCon, besides being really like a fun day, but it's the size of like a hotel ballroom. It's not like a con size. Even they, they do two to two and a half days of this thing because they have a lot of uh, uh, panels. So they've got people coming and stuff like that. But like if you're just into, I don't know, if, if you're like sort of passing me into it, you know, obviously I'm more in, into the comics, into the toys. You can walk around this thing like really easily. And uh, so this year wasn't able to go and these uh, they sell the to- they sell the toys online ahead of time. So you can like buy a pass and buy the toys online and they're like print to order toys. So even though they're badass, like they, you know, exclusives that they sell online for a con, they lose their their luster if you can't go get them yourself. Yeah, and PowerCon is uh, used to be in Torrance, and now it's been in Anaheim for the last like couple. So even though like this is badass, they um, uh, I missed it when it first came out because this would have been what I bought. And uh, yeah, so you weren't you it and it's just the exclusivity of it, you know, makes you not not want to buy it as much. And um, they do sell out, so it's not completely print to order, um, you know, but they do take orders for like two months. Or something like that. So anyway, I think it's badass. Um, cool. I, got, I, I got related cool. stuff in the pickups, so we'll, we'll see. So, all right, next uh, on the list. All right, this is crazy. So this is a Lord of the Rings exclusive that was through Burger King that they only supposedly made 5,000. Uh, Uruk High from 2002. Um, like, you know, it's just crazy stuff. $175 figure right there. Uh, you'd never know. I would never know that this, though some of those Lord of the Rings sell for a lot, but anytime there's rare mail away stuff, it's crazy. Uh, this is cool. This is the Halloween Michael Myers figure where he's like ghost that has the ghost sheet on and the glasses. This sells mm. for a crap ton, man. Uh, NECA cult classics sold for $960. I think it looks AFA graded. I'm not sure. But you know, nine hundred sixty dollars for a figure even graded is crazy. It's probably super rare. I don't know much about it. Cool looking figure though. Uh, here you go for all the muscle men talk. This is the most famous muscle figure. This is Satan Cross. Satan Cross. Yeah. Um, so the the way you can tell this figure if you turn it around, it has a little hole in the back. And the original um, figure that came out in Japan of this figure had a like a uh, uh, it's like the back end of a horse that you would attach to that and put in that hole. And it was like a two part figure. And when they put this figure out in the United States, the second part didn't come with it. And uh, so, yeah, this is a super rare figure. It's always been the one that sells for the most. I don't own one. My always, my favorite figure was always the hand, right? The little hand one. That was always yeah. my favorite one, <laughs> but uh, yeah, muscle men sell for a shit ton or muscles. I always call them muscle men, but I, I don't think they were ever called muscle men. Anyways, uh, I loved freaking army ants. I talk about army ants on here a lot. Here's an unopened eight piece set of army ants sold for $122. And of course, we'll end it with the homies series nine set sold for $210. That is the market report for November 15th.